we are in uh, Westbury, Long Island. I haven't done these type of a video in uh, probably this is the first time I'm doing this type of a video. Uh, but uh, This is actually a couple miles away, uh, probably give or take about, um, I don't know, maybe 40, 50, 50 miles. Um, from uh, outside of New York City and um, Cemetery of the, the Holy uh, Rood it's spelled R-O-O-D and uh, we're going to um, visit the um, Grave of a, um, a pretty uh, famous uh, person. Um, her name is um, Margaret Unsinkable Molly Brown Tobin Brown. Margaret Tobin. Uh, she was um, born in. 1867 died in 1932 at the age of 35 died in New York in uh, in Manhattan she was a um, humanitarian uh, humanitarian philanthropist Preservanist, politician, author, stage actress, Titanic survivor. She was born in Hannibal, Missouri. At the age of 19, she went to, Le uh, to live in Leedsville, Colorado with her brother in the summer of 1886. Um, she met James J.J. Uh, J. Brown and they were married in September of 1886. While her husband advanced to be a superintendent in, in the mines, um, now while she, uh, you know, in the mines there, Maggie um, started soup kitchens in the mining community and became active in women's rights. Her husband found a way to mine gold, um, you know, which made them wealthy. And in 1894, Maggie and uh, JJ moved to Denver. Now they went on to uh, Denver. Uh, by 1903, no, we'll look for section 15, which I think is right here. By 1903, um, you know, she was um, already treading ground where few male women were allowed, and in uh, 1898, she became an associate member of the Denver Women's 
Press Club. Although she had not yet published any works, Margaret would soon publish many travel essays, an account of her Titanic experience and autobiography. By 1903, by 1903, Margaret began tackling the tough social issues of her time, juvenile uh, justice, children's, women's, and minors' rights, and social equality. When Judge uh, Ben Lindsay met Margaret in 1903, he saw a partner that shared his vision of a juvenile court system and had the ability to raise funds and make connections. Together, they uh, created a juvenile um, justice system that reformed the way the state and the nation treat juvenile crimes. She also became heavily involved in politics. Fast forward to April of 1912, she booked passage on the maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic, and shortly before midnight on April the 14th, the Titanic struck ice and sunk. After being rescued by the ship she began to take action cons consoling survivors who spoke little English and rifling through the ship to find extra blankets and supplies to distribute to the survivors. She also compiled lists. She also compiled lists of survivors and arranged for information to be radioed to their families at her expense. Margaret rallied the first class passengers to donate money to help less fortunate passengers. And before um, the Carpathia, which was a ship that rescued uh, Margaret, reached New York, $10,000 had been raised. When interviewed by reporters upon her return and asked what she attributed her survival to, uh, she replied, typical brown luck. Typical brown luck. We're unsinkable. The Titanic disaster uh, made Margaret a national hero and her heroism in assisting other survivors and getting people to safety was recognized after her return. So she was considered, um, you know, a, a hero in uh, what she had done. Back then, imagine just going through that uh, that ordeal and uh, just experiencing a, a disaster. And you, you have to not only keep yourself calm, but she was also trying to keep everyone else on board uh, the ship uh, calm as well. Which is, I think, to to to, to be said about her character. Um, a leader you know many people are not uh, are not able to lead in, in situations she was which uh, you know uh, says a lot uh, about her uh, character and who she was uh, as a as a person she founded and uh, was head of the Titanic Survivors Committee, which supported immigrants who had lost everything in the disaster and helped to get a memorial erected to the Titanic survivors in Washington, D.C. In 1914, her bid for U.S. Senate was undertaken by the Congressional Union and endorsed by President of the National Women's Suffrage Association of New York, 
but she postponed her bid uh, because of World War I. She died in her sleep in October of 1932 at the age of 65. A hero in every uh, sense of the word. Stepping up uh, during a natural uh, disaster. That's for sure. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, when I got there, I wasn't able to actually get up close to the actual physical, physical memorial. Uh, there was a service and social distancing and everything else. But I still wanted to continue to pay tribute, uh, show you the pictures of the final memorial.